Is your Kangol digging holes everywhere and you don't know what to do about it? Don't worry, we have the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Kangol Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Kangol and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. If your Kangol is digging holes everywhere and it's starting to stress you out, don't worry as today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about how to stop your dog digging. Hey guys, welcome to another really quick fire webinar breakdown of a very common problem behavior that whether you're working as a canine professional with clients or you yourself are trying to become a high level leader for your companion dog at home and that is around digging and we're going to break down the implementation of the strategies and the behavior modification plans that I utilize to be able to correct digging behaviors and be able to have people have dogs that aren't destroying their gardens every single day. So let's dive into the webinar and we're going to get some really good information that I promise you you're going to be able to use at home with your dogs or your clients. Now, as is always the case with any problem behaviors that we may have with our dogs, we need to not only just to put a plaster on the problem, but we need to get to the root cause of the issue. And with digging, we need to look at what is it that's causing digging. Now, we have to have a little bit of empathy for dogs because digging is a very normal behavior that dogs will display. Now, obviously, as a good leader, we need to be able to teach them when that is appropriate and when it isn't. And usually in your garden, that isn't appropriate. If we go out for a lovely walk in the woods and you want to dig a hole cool if we go to the beach you want to do some digging okay cool but if I tell you we're not doing that in the home or in the garden then you need to listen to me because I am the leader I am in charge and I set the rules boundaries and expectations in this family environment so that's what we need to be able to get to with our dogs now when it comes to digging a lot of the time that digging is a result of too much pent-up frustration in terms of physical energy and mental stimulation and they haven't got a productive outlet for both of those things so the first thing we always start off with with a vast majority of behavior problems not just digging but we can always achieve higher levels of success simply by putting in more exercise more mental stimulation exercise is obvious we can go out and play frisbee we can go out and play fetch we can go for a walk we can do some running we can teach a dog to run alongside a bike the options are truly endless when it comes to exercising our dogs physically mental stimulation can require a little bit more creativity but there's tons of different puzzles out there you can get frozen kongs any kind of uh, obedience work uh, agility getting your dog into doing just any kind of work with you is fantastic especially for working breeds so we're going to add in more mental stimulation more physical exercise and you will be shocked at the amount of times that alone will address the problem of digging because the root cause rather than sticking a plaster on it the root cause was simply that they're bored and frustrated so let's start there if that doesn't work you've done that and you're still seeing these problems then we get to move on to the more behavior modification the fancy stuff that people like to hear when it comes to kind of these intervention strategies so then when it comes to digging, digging is a is a funny one in the canine behavior world. It's not something that can be addressed as easy as, say, reactivity or excessive barking. Because, it, first of all, there's a few different things that come up with problems. Supervision, being able to ensure that we're watching the dog to be able to correct the behavior we need to be able to use him we need to be able to implement fantastic timing so the strategies we use are going to be a little bit different when it comes to digging but regardless of the strategy that we use for any behavior problem we absolutely first again must address the relationship that the dog has with its owner now whether that's the dog with you as an owner and you're trying to become a higher level owner or maybe you're watching this because you're thinking about taking first steps into maybe doing this for a living you cannot come in and simply Simply say this is what you should do see you later or watch me do it I'm gonna do it oh awesome that worked see if do what I did see you later that worked because you were able to come in and establish a good relationship with the dog very quickly through your higher levels of leadership skills the owner then watches that tries to replicate it without that level of relationship and things just fall apart that's no use to anybody we have to be able to teach the owner how to become a high level canine leader restructure that relationship so that the dog sees them as the leader 
and we'll look to them for guidance and direction. When we get to that point, then implementing the modification programs, correction-based programs, uh, positive reinforcement-based programs, that becomes so much easier. Because when you have that relationship, asking a dog what you do want from it is much easier and asking your dog to stop doing something is then also much easier. So we must address that. At Fenrir, we use our boot camp process. There'll be a link to the online version of that down in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. But that boot camp process is very specifically, I designed it to not only be the one month process of being able to really put in those rules, boundaries, and expectations to restructure that relationship, but inherently, it then also teaches the owner how to be a high level canine leader. It teaches them the theory and the understanding required for them to be a high level canine leader so not only do they come out of the other end with the desired outcome of that restructured relationship but on top of that they have learned to become a high level leader that can then address any future problems which then means they don't need me again as a canine behaviorist which is the ultimate goal of any canine behaviorist it isn't to put a plaster on things it's to help the owners not need us again if you can do that then I promise you, you'll have a lot of success in this industry. Hey guys, really quick message. I just wanted to let you know, if you're not following us on Instagram already, we are doing tons of helpful, valuable content over there that I'm sure you'll love. We've got a couple of different pages that I think you'll really enjoy. First is our Fenrir business account, where we do loads of stuff about training, some of our product services, and just what we get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, building the fastest growing canine company in the world. And maybe you'll be interested in checking out my personal Instagram, that's at I am Will Atherton. Again, if you're interested, there'll be links in the description. Sorry for interrupting the video. I'll let you get straight back to it. So what we need to do is be able to help them restructure that relationship. Again, we use our canine bootcamp to be able to do that. Once we've got through that process, like exercise, you will be surprised that simply going through that process will address. So if exercise might address 60% of cases, restructuring the relationship might address another 30% of cases. So just simply going through, and by the way, we put a lot of exercise structure into the boot camp for that reason again not only to restructure the relationship not only to help our owners become high level canine leaders but also to give them an opportunity to put a lot more exercise in because again we know that through thousands of cases that 90 95 percent of these cases will be addressed simply by doing that which then leaves us this last little bit which is where we then might need to get a little bit more creative in terms of an actual structured behavior modification program now this is usually where i jump into correcting the behavior but when it comes to digging i want you to take more of a, a process of managing and correcting the behavior part of being a good leader is about setting our dogs up for success not setting them up to fail so if this behavior is happening when you go out and you leave your dog with free access to the garden stop leaving them with free access to the garden that solves your problem it puts a plaster over it which i know i've talked about not being what we're doing but this is a management strategy whilst we're going through these boot camp processes whilst we're going through the strategies in terms of actually fixing this problem behavior but by doing that you're going to set your dog up for success and setting our dogs up for success is always what we're looking for looking to do so if you cannot supervise manage the environment stop giving them access to the problem areas whether that's by utilizing crates pens adding new fences, barricading things off. If you cannot manage the environment while we're going through this process, then if you can't, sorry, if you can't be with your dog and supervise them the whole time while we're going through this process, then manage the environment while we're doing so. So start by managing the behavior. Then we go on to correcting and addressing the behavior. So we've sorted the root cause, exercise, restructure relationship. Now we can get into actually addressing that in particular small part that is the problem behavior of digging. Correct, redirect, reinforce. There we go, done. Not, I'm going to go into a bit more detail, don't worry, but that is as simple as it is. Too many people make these concepts of canine behavior remodification far more complicated than they need to be. And the reason why people have other behaviorists or other, um, in particular, positive only approaches don't necessarily work is because, first of all, they don't address those first two pieces of the puzzle and then they simply try and put plasters on the problem and it doesn't really work. But because you've put those efforts in, this bit will work. So we simply need to correct, redirect, reinforce. So when the dog, again, when we can supervise, if we can't, we've managed the environment so that they can't do it in the first place. But okay, now we can be here 
we know this is where the dog does this problem behavior we're trying to solve. We're now going to give them access to it. When the dog starts digging, we're gonna go in with a, a verbal correction. Shoulders back, chest up, deep voice, vocal inflection is very important. There's gonna be a very stern, ah, ah, or a bit, no. And we're gonna save that vocal inflection and that verbal correction. We're not gonna use it much, but we're gonna save it for situations like this where it can really carry some weight. The more work you put into restructuring the relationship in the second part of the process, then the faster, quicker, more effective this verbal correction will be. So the dog is about to start digging and that, no, snaps them out of it really quickly. So we get their attention back to us, then we redirect them to the behavior that we do want, which can be absolutely anything that you deem to be positive, whether that's to come and do some obedience work with you, whether that's to go into a sit and stay, whether that's you then throw a ball for them. We correct the negative behavior, we redirect them to a desirable one, and then when they're displaying those desirable behaviors, we reinforce. So again, correct, redirect, reinforce. It really isn't that rock, uh, rocket science when it comes to digging in particular. It's not an aggressive behavior, um, it's just an annoying one. So going through this process in a very positive based way, yes, we're utilizing corrections, but we're gonna stick with verbal corrections and we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can do in our power to set our dogs up for success. We go through that process and digging becomes a very easy problem to get on top of, it really does. The problem is people want you to come in and in a, in a 30 minute consultation with no effort on the owner's part be able to address the situation and that simply won't work it doesn't work uh, and anybody saying that something like that does work is wrong um, and they're, they're probably trying to sell you something that, that doesn't work yes we we suggest you go through our boot camp process but that's simply a structure that we put in place to help you achieve the hard part of the restructuring the relationship as easily and efficiently as possible with high levels of success add more exercise in add more mental stimulation in become a high level canine leader and restructure your relationship with your dog then be able to communicate with your dog what you don't want through correction what you do want through redirection and reinforcement. The, the principle is simple. The implementation requires effort and discipline on your side if you're an owner or helping your client see that and for them to be willing to put the effort in. If they are, you will have a fantastic dog. If they're not, that you won't. Unfortunately, it really is as simple as that. And that's what we're trying to help people understand. First and foremost, before they get a dog, are you willing to do this? If not, you shouldn't get a dog. Unfortunately, for those people that do, we then need to find a way of being able to convince them to be able to change their lifestyle and mentality, to be able to put the effort in that is required to ensure that we're keeping these dogs out of shelters and not being put down. So go through that process, and I promise you'll have a lot of success with digging. Um, it's not rocket science. It's just a little bit of discipline and hard work. There you have it, guys. Some really useful information from Will there, all about how to stop your Kangal digging. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have three dedicated videos coming out every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Kangle Show.